Today I'd like to talk about uh, electric potential, uh, which is uh, another word for um, kind of the potential energy that objects have uh, because of electric fields and uh, attractions and repulsions. Um, another phrase for this that uh, you might uh, uh, have heard of is uh, the voltage associated with the circuit and so on. So electric potential. First of all, um, as uh, mentioned in previous videos, um, the attraction and repulsion of uh, electrons and protons, um, it uh, causes those objects uh, or charged objects to move. And uh, it's possible, if you have the right setup and orientation of things, that you could harness that energy um, in very similar way to uh, what's presented here. If you've got water that flows, if you put a wheel nearby it, you could put it underneath here, and that water would cause this wheel to, to rotate. And you could put, uh, I don't know, some sort of a, a machinery or, or something here and, and use that energy. Um, likewise, charged objects have uh, the potential to move. and. Uh, uh, typically, uh, if you've got uh, positively charged things and positively charged things, um, if you wanted to, um, I'm sorry, if you have positively charged things and negatively charged things, if you wanted to try to separate those things, um, it would require some effort, some energy, some work on your part to, to make that happen. Um, uh, likewise, if you had um, two positively charged things, uh, two similarly charged things, and you wanted to push those things together, um, that would require um, some work being done. Uh, if you had two positively or two oppositely charged things far away from each other, they will naturally move towards each other. And that kind of natural attraction, that natural motion, is something that we could take advantage of uh, and scrape off some of that energy, perhaps. Uh, or likewise, if we have two positively charged particles near each other, they're going to want to naturally repel. And again, maybe we could harness some of that um, natural motion. And uh, how much energy we get out of these scenarios uh, is defined as the electric potential. And so um, that potential is the amount of energy that we get per unit of charge that moves. And so if we were to move a whole Coulomb's worth of charge, of course, we'd get more energy out of it than if we just moved, say, um, a few electrons worth of charge. Now, the unit for electric potential is uh, the standard unit for that is a volt and uh, a very useful um, equivalency um, that I often will think of uh, whenever I say the word volt, I will often say joules per coulomb. How many joules do you get per coulomb that moves? So uh, one volt means that you get one joule of energy out of every coulomb uh, that moves. So the symbol, not the unit, but the symbol that's often used uh, is the letter V. Uh, and almost always, you'll see that uh, voltage has some letters associated with it. And that's uh, important to note, because uh, when you're talking about voltage, you're talking about how much energy does it take to move from one location to another. So from A to B, how much energy would be produced uh, per coulomb, or, or how much energy is required per coulomb when that happens. So the general formula or calculation is uh, Electric potential, or voltage, is uh, calculated by figuring out either how much work is required per amount of charge, or uh, in general, just the amount of energy that uh, you get out of uh, or uh, put into uh, moving charge. So a lot of times, we know the voltage already. Um, it's given to us. It's written on batteries, for instance, a 6 volt or a 1 and a half volt battery. Uh, and often we're interested in how much energy we get out of that. And so a helpful rearrangement of this is that uh, the energy that you get out of uh, a setup is equal to how much charge there was that moved times the voltage um, between two different locations. So let's do some calculations. Uh, suppose we were able to set up uh, some plates. Uh, you may have seen in the uh, earlier video that if you've got a plate of positive charge, and a plate of negative charge, 
that produces an electric field between them and so that any charged objects that happen to get placed in here uh, will naturally want to move away from here and down to here. Uh, it's kind of like setting up a waterfall. And so suppose we set this up and uh, inside of this uh, we're able to produce an electric field that has a strength of 6,000 newtons per coulomb. Uh, the first question is just uh, what would, all of a sudden there's, uh, I put some charge in here, uh, this much charge, what force does it feel? And so uh, to do that, uh, that goes back to the field strength uh, calculation. The force that an object feels in an electric field is equal to its charge times the field strength at that location. So 2 times 10 to the negative 7 coulombs times 6,000 newtons per coulomb. And so the force that it would feel, 2 times 10 raised to the, oops, 2 times 10 raised to the negative 7th times 6,000 is a, a force of 0 0.0012 newtons. And uh, then the question is, how much work would it take for me to lift that charge from here to here? Once it's fallen, if I had to lift that back up again, how much work would that take? So work, you remember, is force times distance. And so if the force is uh, this 0 0.0012 value, and uh, the distance between those plates uh, is given to us here as 0.8 centimeters. Centimeters, 0.8 centimeters is 0.8 meters. Then uh, the work that we would get out of this, uh, or the amount of energy it takes to move, um, to lift it from negative to positive there, would be equal to, I think that's 96, let me check that, multiply by 0.08. Uh, oh, 9.6 times 10 to the negative fifth. So, 9.6 times 10 to the negative fifth Newton. Uh, that's how much it takes to lift this amount of charge up. Now, if I had more charge, then it would require, oh, I'm sorry, did I say Newtons? Uh, this is Newton meters, so this is joules is the standard unit of energy. I should have caught that earlier. So, uh, but anyway, it takes that many joules to move this much charge. Uh, this is just an arbitrary amount of charge that I, I picked out of, a, out of the blue. Uh, it could have been anything. Maybe it's a whole lot more. Maybe it's a whole lot less. Maybe it's just an electron. How much energy does it take to move a single electron? Uh, or maybe I have an entire Coulomb's worth of charge. Uh, how much energy would that be? And in fact, uh, since it's so arbitrary, that's usually what we'll talk about is, is how much energy does it take to move a coulomb's worth of charge. And so um, that um, would just be if I took this one, uh, this number out and put a one in its place, then it'd be 6,000 newtons. And so instead of this, and I multiply all that together, 6,000 times 0.08 is 480. So 480 joules is required to lift an entire Coulomb's worth of charge from here to here. And uh, so 480 joules per Coulomb means that the voltage or the potential uh, between these two plates is equivalent to 480 volts. It's a lot of batteries. So, um, in general, uh, meaning if I took away all the um, numbers and just used variables, um, work is force times distance, and force is Q times 
electric fields strength. And so uh, in general, the energy that you need to move in one direction or the energy that you get out when something moves in the opposite direction, the natural direction, is equivalent to the amount of charge that moves and the electric field strength and the distance between um, those two locations. Now, another question uh, asks, how much work is done to um, move 0 0.003 coulombs worth of charge across a potential difference of one and a half volts? Um, another way of saying this is instead of uh, how much work do we need to do um, if we were to set up a battery, how much energy would we get out if this much charge moves through the battery? And so um, I like to think of well, what does a volt mean? A volt means joules per coulomb. That often helps me derive what the formula is uh, if you didn't have it memorized. Uh, but you could look it up um, just a second ago. We said down here the amount of energy you get is the charge times the voltage. So the uh, energy that we get out of this is charge times the potential of the voltage. Um, that's 0 0.003 coulombs times one and a half volts or 1.5 joules per coulomb. If you multiply this together, we get uh, not a whole lot of charge, point, or not a whole lot of energy, 0 0.005 uh, 0045 joules is produced, but um, we don't have a time frame here. If uh, this much is produced uh, per second, then um, that's uh, uh, 4 megawatts uh, of energy. Um, and that might be enough to run some applications, some, uh, some tools. Um, Another question is uh, how many electrons must travel through a circuit if we want 18 joules to be produced um, and we have a 9 volt battery that's running this. Um, how many electrons is essentially asking a charge and so uh, you could use E equals QV or you could rearrange this a little bit. Uh, the charge, um, the amount of charge that has to move through a circuit is equal to the um, energy desired divided by the voltage. And so the energy desired is 18 joules. And the voltage uh, required is 9 volts, which is joules per coulomb. And so uh, if you divide 18 by 9, that's 2 coulombs worth of charge would have to move through this circuit um, in order to create 18 joules worth of energy. Uh, what happens if we use a smaller battery? Well, if we use a smaller battery, that would suggest uh, not as much energy happens uh, per coulomb. Uh, so I probably need more coulombs to go through the circuit. Uh, it probably might take longer for this to happen, um, possibly. Uh, we can use the same equation, Q equals change in energy over voltage. Uh, if 18 joules is desired, but now I only have a one and a half volt battery, then 18 divided by one and a half, I think that's eight, but let's check, 18 over 1.5, ooh, 12, pardon me. So 12 uh, coulombs would have to move through. Uh, I guess that makes sense. One and a half is a sixth uh, the size of a nine volt battery, and so um, six times as many uh, electrons would have to move through in order to create the same amount of energy. So uh, I want to leave with one last kind of interesting question. Um, if you've ever looked at a television, and I guarantee you have, and maybe you're looking at a version of that now, um, you have seen one of these things. Uh, it's kind of interesting. If you set up two plates, uh, a negatively charged plate and a positively charged plate, um, 
any uh, positively charged object. Um, or let's actually think about electrons, since this is an electron gun. Any negatively charged object would be repelled from this plate and attracted to this plate. And so uh, in between these two plates, a field is set up. And most of the time, electrons just jump from one plate to the other and, and kind of complete the circuit. But every once in a while, this one sneaks out. Freedom! And uh, deep in your television, it's set up so that uh, at least some of the original ones, um, there were different colored boxes, a red box and a green box, a little blue uh, box or screen might be a better um, word. And uh, you could control when electrons entered these different things and when an electron hit this red it might glow red, uh, or it might glow green, or it might glow blue. And when you have um, millions of these in a television set, um, these can produce different colored images and pictures and, and so forth. So uh, kind of the, this electron gun apparate, apparatus is, is basically at the heart of a lot of uh, uh, television screens. I think it's called a CRT, uh, cathode ray tube, maybe, um, if you wanted to look up that in more detail. Uh, but anyway, suppose I've got this set up. Um, what, uh, how fast do these electrons leave? Um, how fast are these bullets going? So uh, there are two approaches you could take to answer this question. Uh, you could say that um, we could figure out the force that's acting on this little electron and then uh, use Newton's law. That's uh, F equals ma to figure out what acceleration this guy experiences and uh, then use some kinematics formulas to um, figure out, all right, if it says that much ex acceleration um, over this distance and how much time did that take, and we could calculate how fast it's going. Um, I'm going to call that the nightmare option, um, and I'm not going to do that. Or we could use uh, energy. Energy is a lot simpler calculation here. Um, there is uh, um, energy that uh, would take the object from here to here. And if that energy is uh, um, converted into kinetic energy, because it's moving, uh, we could set up uh, a formula. The energy that's produced in an electric field, where the work that's done as you cross an electric field, um, might be another uh, variable you want to use here. That gets converted into the kinetic energy of an electron. And so the work that's produced in an electric field is the amount of charge times the electric field strength times the distance that it moves. And that is equal to 1 half the mass of an electron times the velocity of an electron, or of the electron squared. And so uh, we can, uh, let's see, I know how much charge is. I could look up the charge of an electron, put it here. Uh, I know the field strength is 28,000 newtons per coulomb. I know the distance is 4 centimeters. That's 0 0.04 meters. Uh, the mass of an electron I could look up, and then V would calculate what that is. Uh, rather than calculating that up, because uh, I'm running out of time, and I don't feel like uh, wasting your time to look up the charge of a single solitary electron and the mass of a single solitary electron. Let's just take this and uh, solve it in the general case. So multiplying both sides by 2 and dividing by m, you get uh, 2 q e d divided by the mass is equal to v squared. And so if I take the square root of both sides, here is a formula that you could use to calculate how fast um, any object, not just an electron, uh, would move if it was placed in this electric field. Um, that is, if it was released from this plate and traveled the whole distance over here. So that's kind of a useful um, formula. Um, a more useful formula might be um, instead of leaving E, the electric field strength, and the distance that's in here, you could uh, instead um, replace 
ED with the voltage, the potential difference, which would remember voltage is energy per coulomb. Um, this part is basically the energy per coulomb times coulomb. Uh, and so if you replace this with voltage, you could get a, a related formula. QV for voltage divided by M equals lowercase v for velocity. So there's uh, uh, another calculation. Um, if you wanted a specific speed, like you wanted to accelerate these electrons up to the speed of light, well, then uh, you could solve this, uh, rearrange it and solve it for V and figure out what voltage would be required to do that. Although I think once you get close to the speed of light, this formula would break down and um, uh, Einstein's theory of relativity would kick in a little bit and you'd have to use some more complicated math. But um, this, these equations are kind of useful too. So anyway, thanks for listening and uh, tune back in again um, next week as we start to talk about voltage that uh, moves through a circuit and uh, um, how much energy is released uh, then. So.